So you're looking to shiny hunt a legendary Pokemon like Rayquaza on the Nintendo Switch. Whoa. That's great news, but the big question is, which Nintendo Switch games can you actually catch Rayquaza on? And there's actually only two of them that you can do this on. Now, there are a couple of factors you'll need to consider before making a decision. One, are you starting from a new save file? If so, how long will it take to beat the game? How long will it take to acquire the new shiny charm to boost your odds? Two, which hunting method has the best odds? Three, could I go play Pokemon Go and transfer it through Pokemon Home instead? And four, is the Pokemon I want to hunt shiny locked in the game I chose? Right off the bat, let's discuss the controversial topic of shiny locked legendaries so we know which Pokemon we can't hunt. Over the years, Game Freak has adopted the concept of shiny locking. To quote Junichi Masuda, as a way of creating a memory or souvenir for the people that attended an event and having that Pokemon remind you of said event. And by the way, I actually had the honor of meeting Junichi Masuda-san at Pokemon World 2024 in Honolulu, Hawaii, where I actually got to ask him which Mega Pokemon was his favorite. And believe it or not, he said it was Mega Rayquaza. And then I asked him, shiny or no shiny? <laughs> now, while some Pokemon have had their lock removed following their debut games, others have not. So to make your life easier, here's a list of all the Pokemon that are not huntable on the Switch. Pipe Null, Silvali, Cosmog, Cosmium, Zamzenta, Zacian, Eternatus, Calyrex, Kubfu, Urshifu, which I, I love Urshifu, Glastrier, Spectrier, Enamorous, the Ruinous Quartet, Coridon, Maridon, the Loyal Three, which are the most hideous Pokemon ever. We got Ogrepun, Terrapagos, and lastly, before we move on to the hunt, it needs to be noted that this video will be covering every available Pokemon game on the Switch up to Legend ZA. However, in regards to Pokemon Legends Arceus and Scarlet Violet based games plus DLC, all legendaries are unfortunately shiny locked. Moving along, the first games we're going to consider are Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. These games base shiny odds are 1 out of 4096. However, you can boost your odds. In order to do so, you must complete the Pokédex, which if you are starting from a new save file, could take you anywhere from 25 to 50 hours. Once you complete the decks, you can then head to Celadon City, walk up to the third floor of the Game Freak Tower, and talk with the director who will award you with a shiny charm, which drastically improves your shiny odds to 1 out of 1,365. With the best odds at hand, it's time to track down the legendaries. Now, Articuno in this game can be found residing in the Seafoam Islands, Zapdos in the Power Plant, Moltres in the Tunnels of Victory Road, and Mewtwo in the Cerulean Cave on Route 4 after becoming the champion. And the only method available for these four will be soft resetting until you encounter their shine, so time results may vary depending on how lucky you are. Now, let's pivot to our phones for a second. While Pokemon Go isn't technically on the Switch, you are able to transfer Pokemon you capture in the game to Pokemon Home, and from there, you can transfer them into whichever compatible games you like. Unlike the mainline games, there is no shiny charm to boost your odds in Pokemon Go. However, this isn't necessarily a bad thing. You'll need to stay up to date though with the current events as the 5 star raids that host the legendaries rotate depending on the events that are occurring. But the legendaries that have been introduced in the game so far are all able to be caught in shiny. And these include the Kanto Bird Trio, Mewtwo, the Johto Dog Trio, Ho-Oh, Lugia, the original Reggie Trio, the Latios and Latias, the Weather Trio, the Creation Trio, the Origin Forms of the Creation Trio, Heatran, Regigigas, Cresselia, the Swords of Justice Trio, Pornatus, Thunderous, Landorus, the Genie Forms, the Tau Trio, Xerneas, Yevental, the Tapus, and Necrozma. The trio, with an exception to the raids, is the Lake Trio, Azelf, Mii Spirit, and Uxie, who rarely can spawn in the overworld, but are 
are each region locked, making catching all three pretty difficult. At the time of recording, in fact, Shiny Zacian will be debuting September 26, 2024, which has been Shiny locked in the Nintendo Switch games, excluding the brief period when game shops like GameStop gave away code cards for it a couple years back. And with Shiny Zacian debuting, this means Shiny Zamazenta will not be too far behind. As mentioned previously, you'll need to keep an eye out for when the legendary you are hunting will be in raids. Otherwise, the legendaries available to hunt are listed out in this graphic right in front of you, with the shiny odds of 1 out of 20 or 5% per raid encounter. In order to participate in raids, you'll need to use either a raid pass, which can be earned free once per day by spinning the photo disc at a gym and can be used at an in-person raid, a premium raid pass that can be purchased in the shop or earned as a reward from special events to be used for an in-person raids, or a remote raid pass that can be purchased in the shop, allowing you to join up to five raids per day without being in person. I know Pokemon Go isn't as hype as it was when it launched, but it's seriously so helpful to catch shiny legendary Pokemon when they do happen to show up that can easily be transferred right to Pokemon Home. The next games we'll take a look at are Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, which have the same base and shiny charm odds as the previous titles. Normally, the shiny charm is coded to boost the odds of any huntable method you'd want to choose. However, in BDSP, it's coded to only improve the odds of the Masuda egg hunting method. And in these games, the only way to hunt legendary Pokemon is to soft reset. So we actually don't need to worry about obtaining the charm at all. In order to get hunting though, you'll need to unlock access to the newly added Romanus Park, which was such a cool feature to add in this game, by simply completing the Sinnoh decks, consisting of 150 entries. Starting from scratch, a new save file can take upwards of about 26 hours. And this doesn't even take into consideration all the time you'll spend on soft resetting, which as we all know, time to shine results will vary depending on how lucky you are. But I heard you can get really lucky if you hit that subscribe button, so you should probably do that. Exclusive encounters for Brilliant Diamond include the Dog Trio and Ho-Oh, while in Shining Pearl, you can encounter the Cantonian Bird Trio and Lugia. And in both games, you'll be able to encounter Mewtwo, the Reggie Trio, the Lotties, and Weather Trio. In addition, I did mention how the legendaries were shiny locked in Pokemon Legends Arceus, yet completing missions in Pokemon Legends Arceus unlocks another hunt in Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. You will gain access to soft resetting Arceus once you become the champion of Sinnoh and have completed all the main story missions in Pokemon Legends Arceus, including the final, The Defied Pokemon. From there, you'll need to return home to Twin Leaf Town and grab the Azor Flute on your bedroom floor and use it to trigger the Arceus encounter up on Spear Pillar. One of my friends, Glitch X City, was able to get the shiny Arceus encounter and her reaction action is just amazing. Banger. Oh my god, it's a shiny! No way! No way! Are you kidding me? What? It's a shiny! Oh my god! No! No way! Following those games, let's turn our attention to the entries Sword and Shield. Just as the previous games, the base and shiny charm odds are exactly the same. However, the charm is far more useful here than it was in BDSP because it boosts your odds no matter what method you want to hunt. With obtaining that as your goal, beginning a new save file will take you roughly 35 to 45 hours, dex completion included. Yet the method with the best odds doesn't necessarily require the shiny charm, which drastically reduces the time frame depending on the legendary you wish to hunt. For the purposes of speed, what you need to do is make sure you have purchased the DLC from the Switch eShop, the Io of Armor, and the Crown Tundra, or have a physical game copy with the expansion pass installed. Pokemon just started this with Sword and shield where they make the little cartridges and have the DLCs on them. They also did that in Scarlet and Violet. Anyway, after that, you can unlock the Crown Tundra portion of the DLC fairly quickly, which boasts roughly an hour runtime from beginning of the game to gaining access to the wild area. Once you have that access, backtrack to Wedgehurt Station and capture the Galarian Slowpoke, then talk to the guy standing next to the gate, and when prompted, select Crown Tundra. This will lead you to an unskippable battle with Peony, but winning or losing does not impede your story progression. You'll then follow him to the Dynamax Adventure Cave where the legendary Pokemon are awaiting. This feature being introduced to the franchise was a huge game changer for the shiny hunting community. Never before had there been a way for two, three, or even four friends to connect and help one another complete missions, let alone shiny hunt as a collective group, which has since led to an even further innovation in Scarlet and Violet called Union Circles, where groups of four 
four people can run around, adventure, and yes, even shiny hunt on the same map. As mentioned, this method has the best odds of having a 1 out of 300 chance for a shiny without the charm, and a 1 out of 100 chance with it. It sounds absolutely insane. The sword exclusives include Ho-Ho, Latias, Groudon, Dialga, Tornadus, Reshiram, Xerneas, and Solgaleo, while Pokemon Shields exclusives include Lugia, Latias, Kyogre, Palkia, Thunderous, Zekrom, Yevental, and Lunala. Both games have access to Articuno, Zapdos, Moltres, Mewtwo, Raikou, Entei, Suicune, Rayquaza, Heatran, Giratina, Azelf, Uxi, Mezspirit, Cresselia, Landorus, Kyrim, Zygarde, and the Tapus. I probably mispronounced something wrong in there. Except that's not every legendary in the game, meaning you'll have to progress to the story a bit more. In this case, I would suggest completing the base game as the Pokemon levels in these parts is 65 and up, and the Pokedex to obtain the shiny charm to fully boost your odds. Oh, and you don't get access to bike surfing until after the sixth gym, which comes in handy traversing the tundra. Every Reggie form and the Swords of Justice are soft resettable encounters once you unlock their access from the clues Peony prompts you. That's right, every Reggie 4, meaning Reggie Alecki and Reggie Drago, making a rare moment when Game Freak actually allowed us to shiny hunt legendaries just introduced to us. Yet the joke is still on us because instead of locking them, they just made it so the shiny charm does not boost your odds for these shiny encounters. Anyways, each Reggie can be located in a specific temple with a fun little floor puzzle that'll have you step on circles forming the eyes of the Reggie you're searching for. Reggie Rock can be found in the Giant's Bed in the Rock Peak Ruins, Reggie Ice in the Iceberg Ruins located west of Snow Slide Slope, and Reggie Steel will be found residing in the Iron Ruins in the western part of the Giant's Bed, kind of in the name where they are. When it comes to Reggie Lecky and Reggie Drago though, you unfortunately need to choose between the two as you can only have access to one per save file. Dang it, Pokemon. And in order to unlock Regigigas, you will need to trade in the one you didn't pick. Once all five are in your party, you then can unlock the Regigigas Dynamax Den that can be soft resetted for until the shiny appears. As for the Swords of Justice, you'll just need to follow their footsteps in order to uncover their whereabouts. Verizian's Prince can be found in the Giant's Bed, Terrakion's Prince are located in the Lakeside Cave Balamir Lake and nearby areas, leaving Cobalion's Prince to be found in the Frigid Sea, Roaring Sea Cave, and nearby areas. Now, while shiny legendary Pokemon are really cool, let's not forget about Mega Pokemon, which I talk about collecting them all in this video right over here. 